this lesson, you'll learn how to easily copy and tweak any shape or element, saving lots of time and effort. How to modify and render a variety of different volumes. Techniques that you can use to create lots of different jewelry shapes. And how to use the rulers. Like you've seen, it takes some time and effort to create your ideal metal colors and volumes in this program, but it's definitely worth it. You get professionally looking designs and presentations. And once you've created materials and shapes, you can copy and tweak them infinitely without having to start from scratch, saving lots of precious time. First, we're gonna create white gold ovals in a few super easy steps. We head over to our white gold rounds, select them with the selection tool, Copy and drag them with the mouse while pressing the Option key if you're using Mac or the Alt key if you're using Windows. And we drop them on this new artboard. To transform our rounds into ovals, we select them with the Selection tool and simply drag the blue bounding box with our mouse. And voila, our rounds are oval. To modify them again, we reselect them and pull the bounding box down and our ovals become horizontal. Now we make them a bit bigger by pulling in the top corner of the bounding box with a mouse while pressing the Shift key. The Shift key helps to block the proportion as we scale shapes. To align the ovals on the page, we first group them by selecting them and then pressing the Command and G keys if you're using Mac or the Control and G keys if you're using Windows. Then we head over to the Align section Make sure it's set on the line to artboard and click on the buttons to center them on the page. On top of our ovals, we'll add another shape, so we just drag them down a bit. Now we select the hand tool and use it to move over to the left in our workspace. Then we pick the selection tool to copy and drag the disc and drop it over the ovals. We're going to turn this disc into a drop shape. And as a first thing, we need to remove the highlight and brown shadow. If we ungroup the shape, we'll lose the drop shadow, and we don't want to do that, so we're going to explore a new way of removing them. We double-click on our disk with the selection tool, and you see how the ovals became milky white? There is also a grey arrow, a layer, and a group symbol that appears at the top of the workspace. This technique will let us modify any element in the shape without ungrouping it. To delete the highlight, we click on it with the mouse, and when the bounding box appears, we hit delete. Then we select and delete the brown shadow. Then we just double click on the page with our mouse, outside of the disk. And you see that the arrow and symbols on top of the workspace have disappeared, and the ovals return to their original color. To turn the disk into a drop, we select the white arrow called the Direct Selection tool. Our disk is made with four anchor points and the white tool allows us to manipulate them. We click on the point at the top and drag it with our mouse. On each side of the point, there is a handle. We click on the first handle with the mouse and drag it close to the center point, and then we repeat it on the opposite side. And now our disc is a drop. To create our highlight and brown shadow, we copy the drop and go over to Appearance clicking on the FX letters on the drop shadow buttons to select them. When highlighted, we delete them by clicking on the little trash can. Then we create the highlight and shadow using the same techniques as we learned before. Now we'll scale the drop with a specific percentage. So the first thing to do is to select the three shapes and group them. Then we go up to Object, Transform, and click on Scale. In the window that appears, we type 300% and click OK. 
and our draft has become three times larger. It's a bit too big, so we press the Command and Z keys if using Mac or the Control and Z keys if you're using Windows to undo our last move. Then we go back up to Object, Transform and select Scale. This time we set the number to 200%. Now that our shapes have the perfect size, we group them and align them in the center of the page. On the third page, we're going to learn how to make a cylinder, cone, and a flat square with rounded corners. First, we're going to set the fill color to our flat white gold swatch and leave the stroke color black at 0.25 points. And then we select the rectangle tool. To create our cylinder shape, we click with the mouse on the page where we want it positioned and drag it into the size we want. We go a bit closer and then copy and drag the shape, dropping it beside the cylinder to keep from making our cone shape, making it a bit shorter. Now we select the cylinder and head over to the gradient area where we'll tweak the color until it gives the effect of a high shine white gold tube. And save the swatch like we learned. To make a cone shape, we pick the Direct Selection tool. Click on the top left point with the mouse and drag it to the center. The pink lines indicate when we're in the center. And then we repeat the same thing on the opposite side. We tweak the position a little bit with the gradient tool. To make the highlight and shadows, we set the stroke to one point and pick the line segment tool. Then we click at the top left corner of the cylinder and draw a line by dragging it with the mouse until the end while pressing the shift key. The shift key helps us to block the direction, so we go in a straight line. To set the color, we go up to the empty square and select the stroke color to be white. To make the shadow at the bottom, we first pick a grey stroke color and then we click on the line segment tool and draw our line. The line looks a bit too thin and dark, so we go back up and set the stroke to 1.5 points. and pick a lighter shade of grey. The last shape on this page will be a square with rounded edges. So we head over to the left toolbar and select the rounded rectangle tool and click on the artboard to place it. In the box that appears, we set the width and the height to 3 cm and leave the corner radius at 0.5 cm. Then we set our stroke color to be black, set our stroke to 0.25 points and the shape fill color to be flat white gold. The position is a bit off, so we move it a bit to line it up with the other shapes. With the four blue circles inside the square, we can modify the corner radius by clicking on one and dragging it towards the inside or the outside. Now we pick the gradient tool and rotate and move the gradient into place. The handle and gradient is a bit short, and to make it longer, we click and drag on the point with the black square until it's covering the whole square. For this shape, we'll render the edges rounded, so we'll make our highlight and shadows nice and thick.
To put the shapes on the same level of the page, we're going to use the rulers. First, we group the elements of each item. Then we align the cone in the center of the page. To make the rulers visible, we go up to the top menu, click on View, scroll down to Rulers, and select Show Rulers. Then we simply click on the ruler with the selection tool and drag it down to the bottom of the cone. And line up the cylinder and the square at the same level. To center them, we group and align them in the center. To cancel the ruler, we just select it with the mouse and hit the delete key. To complete our rendering, we add drop shadows the same way that we did for the precious shapes.